Hey, I made a slot machine today. So we're gonna start from the bottom, or start from the top, go to the bottom, and then it's yours. So I imported time to end threading for basically the same thing. Uh, you're gonna see when I start running it that uh, the numbers will periodically move, so I needed a, a time offset, so I needed it to sleep. So FST, which is just first, second, third, uh, they're just the, the, I don't know what the slot machine circle -y things are called, but those, the revolving numbers. Uh, so count will be how many times? Let me actually read through this real quick before I tell you. So we define get input global. We grab our variables here, we grab our data. We're waiting for user input. If count equals zero, okay, yeah. So count represents which slot machine uh, turning thing are, we're using. So if it's zero, it means we're at the first one. And if it's two or one, then it's at the second and two, third. Um, so each time we get user input, we will increment. And then, yeah. And then we will set these accordingly. So that count needs to be globalized. So, cause we're gonna be using threads cause we're gonna have them all spinning at the same time. So if you don't know what a thread is, it just means that uh, you can have multiple things running of your same program at the same time. And uh, usually it's one at a time, but here you can have them parallel running. Uh, it's kind of useful. Uh, it's slightly annoying to set up, but uh, it's a good concept to have. So if you ever have to deal with uh, multiple instances of anything, this is what you have to do. Okay, so moving on, we have the actual game. So again, we have to bring in our uh, variables. So we're starting off with wallet of like 100 insert currency of your choice. Uh, spins will cost $8 or whatever this is supposed to be. It could be eight pennies or whatever. Um, so while your wallet is greater than zero, which means you're not broke, you can keep playing. It should actually be greater than spin cost. Wallet should be greater than spin cost or equal to, because if you have less money, you can't play. Yeah, I should fix that now. Spin cost. So wallet should be greater than or equal to spin cost. Because if you have $7, you can't play. Sorry, I just need to fix that. Um, so from there, we have our wallet. Uh, we subtract the spin cost value. So we paid. And then we have, uh, we set first, second, third to zero. Count to zero. Uh, F1, so these are just control variables again. So these will, uh, so they should be true here and then true here. I don't think I needed to set these this way. Actually, no, I do, because I need to reset every single time we spin. Cool. So after that, we have, so again, these are gonna be our control variables. So they're they're gonna take place as a concept called a semaphore. So I don't wanna use a semaphore, but it's the same idea. I use a flag to tell when our resource is available and not available. So if it is true, then it is not available and so on. Or if it is false, then it's not available. I will read this and then we'll get to it okay so while true so this is an endless loop if uh, our first value is true then we go in first equals random generated zero to five so that's the number that's going to be spinning if uh, f1 input thread 
so blah 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 okay so here we're waiting on getting user input input that starts and then we close this off so we only wanted to enter this one time I think there's probably a better way to do that to stop you from going in twice but that's good enough for me uh, then we'll go through and we're gonna start our second one so we're still going in to the first value just an FYI but we don't go into this one so it's still gonna be generating that number and then the second one is going to generate 0 to 5 again and uh, we're going to look at the random number generator in a second but because uh, I made my own because I wanted you to see what goes into a random number generator so from there again uh, so we have to wait if uh, the first number has not gone through then we can't start the next input uh, and then the same thing uh, and not yeah, so if uh, the last two are false now, wait, if S1 and not F, which means F is supposed to be false, which means that input has now been added. And yeah, so if uh, first and second have gone, then third can start. Um, now that I think think about it I didn't need threading for this I think I just added this for no reason because <laughs> I'm not technically waiting I am technically waiting actually for user input uh, I forget why I thought I needed threading but uh, upon further inspection I don't actually need it so if you want to use it that's cool too. I, I actually wanted this chapter to be about that, but I guess I just got in my own head. That will happen from time to time. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to figure out a, your own way to use this, it's already set up. Um, and then once you reach the end, break. We leave the while loop if uh, some third option. If F, so if all of these are false, then I don't care anymore. Wait a minute. Why wouldn't I care? Oh, right. Yeah, so we finished doing that. So after each one, we then go to roll, which would update this. Um, it's a string, which we'll see in a second, and it'll sleep for a second. I actually wanted to change just because it's a little slow one oh, you'll see in a second and then I didn't actually want to calculate what each roll meant because I, I looked and I didn't really understand how the slot machines worked <laughs> like I get that if it's all three of the same then you get some prize or whatever and then uh, but there's all these combinations and I didn't want to add those up. So in order to make it simple on myself, I just uh, added the numbers together. And then those numbers can be greater than or less than what you paid combined. Uh, so then we add what you made to your wallet. Or yeah, no, yeah, it's just add. And then we tell you what you won. And then game over when you run out of money. Okay, so for a random number generator, you really just need a seed. So a seed is a starting number that uh, you use to generate randomness. So I actually learned this through a tutorial myself. Uh, so I have added, um, so under assets, you'll see seed. So this is just a seven digit, yeah, seven digit number. So after we run it the first time, you'll see that that digit has changed since uh, I'm reading it and I am doing my change to it that I saw online. So I times it by itself, I cut it and then I cut it again. I don't know why I had to cut it this way. I could have just done one to eight. I think it's to find out, to make sure that it is the correct size or it would throw an error, but both situations would throw an error. So I don't know why I cared that much. Um, 
Yeah. Oopsie doopsie again. I gotta stop. I gotta start reviewing these more closely. It's only when I start talking about them out loud that I actually realize what I did. Okay. Uh, so from here, we're gonna write the change that we made. So we write new seed to our value. We don't have W plus, so it's not gonna append. It's gonna overwrite. So we're gonna create, technically we delete everything inside seed and then add this new file into that seed location. Uh, so for i new seed num equals int i if start less than num and is greater than num return number. So if it is within, if one of the values in our new thing is correct, then we return that number. If it's within that range. Uh, and if it's not, then we're going to be doing some a little bit of recursion and we're going to call the same function again with the same parameters. So it'll just keep going around in a circle. I'm actually really bummed that the threading <laughs> didn't actually matter because <laughs> it's, I was, I, I was so psyched that I could have threading in this because I was like, oh, I haven't worked on this in a while. Uh, I guess it's, it's whatever. It's fine. Kind of. It's not fine. <laughs> I wanted this to be cooler. Uh, I could just take out this and it would still work with threading, but at the same time, I could take out the more complicated thing and it would still work. Um, but yeah, at least you got to learn the concept of threading if you didn't. And if you did already know and you didn't want to set it up, it's already there. So you could use that, I guess. <laughs> so let's actually take a look at this. So slot machine. So here you see that the number should be changing. Yeah. So one, two, three. I think it's just been stuck on. Oh yeah, it's stuck on two. <laughs> Uh, zero. So let's go three. And now our next number. So it's, it technically can put in any input, but I assumed you just press enter. So three and let's go four, four, five. Good enough for me. And it'll just keep doing that until you run out of money. Um, okay. So let's, I don't, I didn't remember what the number was, but it's definitely wasn't that number. So you can see that the seed has changed. Uh, so whatever you think you could use this for, or if you wanna just break it apart, or uh, you can go all in on a random number generator and make your own. Like uh, there are multitudes of ways of making a random number generator. You can actually uh, make a really complicated one based using like, uh, if you have Linux, I think there's a function that lets you take uh, human randomness. Like it takes the randomness from your typing your requests that you put into the terminal and lets you use that as a random number generator. Uh, there's several other ways. You can use an algorithm to uh, make the change. Um, yeah, you can go really crazy with that. Um, again, maybe <laughs> you can figure out how to make threading work or not work it's it's whatever at this point oh god why uh but yeah that's that's all i got for you today uh have a good one see ya